Hi everyone and welcome to UBS Trending. I'm your host, Anthony Pastore. Thanks for joining us. This week, UBS released the results of our latest quarterly investor sentiment research. It is a global survey of 4,000 high net worth investors as well as business owners, including 1,400 right here in the United States. And by the way, 84% of those investors say that expert guidance is especially important to them at this time. So we're going to discuss these findings right now with my two guests, Jason Chandler, the head of Wealth Management USA, and Nadia Lovell, senior U.S. equity strategist in the chief investment office. Really wonderful to have you both here. There's a lot to break down in the investor sentiment report, as there always is. So Jason, I thought maybe I would, I would start with you. Um, it's, what's interesting right now is that there isn't really one big story, Jason, from what I looked at when we saw the results of the survey, right? There are investors are worried about their recession. They're worried about inflation. We We've got a uh, midterm election coming up in a couple days, so that's certainly an area of concern. Business owners have, co of course, their own concerns here. So with all of the noise, how do you think investors are feeling based on the results you saw about the economy and, of course, their own individual portfolios? Terrific. Well, Anthony, thanks for, for having me here. It's always nice to join you uh, here in, in the studio. And I'd say, you know, I get a chance to meet with clients in person or virtually, you know, every day. Uh, and as you just outlined, uh, it's really an uncertain time right now. Uh, on the one hand, you have all these negative headwinds, inflation, rising interest rates, geopolitical events, et cetera. But what's really coming through all this is a growing fear of recession. Uh, we see a little nervousness as investors anticipate the pace of the Fed's rate hikes in the upcoming meetings. And most recently, the Commerce Department reported last week that the economy actually grew during the quarter, but 63% of investors feel like we're in a recession or will be in one by the end of the year. Uh, we're also seeing business owners start to, to really hunker down. Two thirds feel optimistic about their business, but a lot more are feeling a little bit more neutral about the, the outlook. And when we ask them, six in 10 business owners plan to keep hiring and investing the same level for next year rather than expanding or increasing headcount. Right. So definitely seeing some caution. Uh, and to your point earlier, you know, it, it, investors need advice and right. many more are seeking it. Right, because it's not the whole story, is it? They're actually, I mean, are, certainly 63% of uh, respondents expecting a recession. I'm not sure that's as much of a surprise as we talk about this quite often, but there is some optimism in the report as well, Jason. So maybe you could point out some of those, because it's not all doom and gloom. No, I don't think it's doom and gloom at all. I think our, our clients generally are optimistic uh, by nature. Uh, and we've seen a little bit as the, the markets have recovered a little bit this quarter with, with half of our investors optimistic about the U.S. economy, uh, citing strong demand for goods, low employment, and a return to normalcy uh, after COVID as reasons for hope for in the future. So for investors willing to put cash to work, there's lots of opportunity right now. Right, it's nice to see that 52% are optimistic about the stock market. So that's, that's a good thing to see. Perfect. Jason, thank you very much for that. Um, and, and Nadia, that's really a perfect segue as we get into the next part of the conversation. We love having you here for the investor sentiment conversations because you sit in the chief investment office and you're talking to clients, you're talking to our advisors here at the firm about best opportunities in the market, and especially with the market the way it is now, this environment of uncertainty, what are you recommending right now as far as investment opportunities? Yes, thank you, Anthony. You know, we can all acknowledge it's been a very volatile time in markets, but sometimes volatility can create opportunities. In fact, the best time to invest in the market tends to be when valuation has come in and sentiment is pure or is poor. So when we look across the investment landscape, we actually see quite a few opportunities. In the equity markets, we continue to like healthcare and consumer staples. These sectors tend to be more resilient during economic slowdowns. In the fixed income market, yields have gone higher. And so we see opportunities in high grade bonds and resilient credit, which also can act as defensive areas. You know, we also recommend investing in hedge fund strategies and private markets, which tends to be less correlated to the fixed income and the equity market performance. And also this adds another layer of maximizing diversification. And finally, when we think about the global transition to sustainability and stability, we think that that's going to create opportunities in areas like food, technology, energy, as well as the environment. 
Terrific. I, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned a lot of those particular sectors as opportunities for investors. But let's take it one step further, because something else that the Chief Investment Office focuses heavily on is the election. We've got a midterm coming up. Normally, midterms aren't as big of a deal, but there's so much at stake in the next few days. And we know that it was a question in the survey, and respondents gave their varying views on what their either nervous about or concerned about when it comes to the election. So what would you say are some of the top things that they're talking about and how they should be positioned, investors being positioned, be due to the election and what they can expect afterwards? You know, Anthony, quarter after quarter, we see that U.S. investors cite politics as a key concern when they're thinking about achieving their financial goals. But reality is, when you look at the research, there really isn't any sort of consistent relationship between which party controls the government and market returns. But inflation is at a 40-year high. You're also seeing fears of recession increasing. So it's no surprise that the economy is a key issue as we head into Election Day. But we continue to believe that monetary policy, which is set by the Federal Reserve, which impacts interest rates, the level of interest rate in the economy, is going to continue to be a key driver of markets in the year ahead, just as it has been in this past year. But Anthony, one thing that's a bit concerning, though, is that in our sentiment survey, four out of 10 investors say that they would raise cash if interest rates increase significantly. Now, of course, the return on cash is going to increase along with rates. But reality is inflation is high. And so the true value of that cash is going to be eroded. So we are not recommending high cash positions right now because we still see opportunities in the fixed income market, in the equity markets, as well as in alternative investments. Terrific. Yeah, put that cash to work. Absolutely. That's the really that's the that's the lesson here. And we could see it time and time again. If you look historically, every time if you just stayed in cash, you missed major opportunities in the markets. And especially as you mentioned, Nadia, inflation is nothing to be sneezing at these days. It's it's very, very apparent that it could impact your overall cash positions value over time. Absolutely. Terrific. It grows that value. Exactly. Nadia and Jason, thank you so much. Um, it's always great to digest the report. There's a lot more in the actual report, everybody, so make sure to check it out. But again, let me thank Nadia Level, Jason Chandler, for being in the studio with us. Thank Good you. to see both of you. Great. And for more information and to access that full report, which I would recommend you should do, visit the website, ubs.com forward slash investor hyphen sentiment, and make sure to follow UBS on social media. We've got platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter, where you can find our content. Plus, all of our past UBS trending episodes are available on demand on our website, ubs.com slash studios, and on the UBS YouTube channel. And don't forget, if you have any specific questions about how this report impacts you or how you want to think about your portfolio positioning, make sure to contact a UBS financial advisor. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. We hope you have a great day, and remember to keep your eyes on what's trending. We'll see you soon.